guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make music like Ame and Dixon. As usual, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that kind of stuff in this video. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. And yeah, let's get started. So, this loop you already heard in the intro, we're at 120 BPM, kind of like a little bit slower house and techno type vibes. The first sound we have here is the lead, which sounds like this. This lead is kind of like melodic and rhythmic. Like if you listen to it, it's very, it's really syncopated. And what I mean by syncopated is basically just sort of like very heavily relying on 16th notes. Like you can see we have over here, all of these notes, like all of those, not, all in, in that whole space, there's no quarter notes or eighth notes. It's all 16th notes. And you can hear it's really like grooving off of the hi-hats and the percussion and the bass line. And so this is what syncopation is. So yeah, so this is a very syncopated lead, but it's also about the melody, you know, it's playing this thing. We are in D minor. So you can see like we have D and then C, the ninth of D minor, A, the fifth. You know, it's just kind of following the scale. Nothing too crazy there. It's also just like about like the way it's going from like the high notes down to the low notes, you know, sort of like call and response. For the sound on this one, maybe using analog, we've got a saw wave and a square wave here, you can see, and then I've got this going into a low pass filter. A low pass is a big part of this sound, you know, it's more of like a kind of short, like, plinky. Sort of pluck like this, so I've got this little, really short envelope on there, and then we've got... I've got the filter or the frequency at a place where like when it drops down you hear that like it at the highest part of the frequency sweep but then it goes down to the lowest or to like a lower part so it's still a pluck you know because if we turn it off it feels a little bit more like a translate or something like that so yeah then the only other thing we got there is just a bit of vibrato and a bit of unison just to kind of give it some more color and character and that is it for inside of analog. After that, I have this echo, which is doing dotted eighth notes. You can hear this is the only sort of like spacey effect that we have on here, which is fine. I mean, when you have a mix like this that has a lot of stuff going on. You know, you don't want to go too crazy. If I start adding a lot of reverb or maybe a more complicated delay, it's going to get just really, yeah, it's going to be too much in the mix. But this, you can see, we just got dotted eighth notes. I've got this on the ping pong setting. So a ping pong delay is kind of like, if you think of like a ping pong table, it bounces, the ball bounces from one end to the other and then back and forth. Same kind of idea here. It's like going like this in the stereo field. So between the two ears. Can hear it's a good way to put this kind of like higher in the mix because all of a sudden this has this big wide stereo image like if we turn off the echo it's still a pretty loud sound in the mix but if we turn it on all of a sudden you're like hearing it a lot more so it's a good way to give it a bit more sort of subconscious presence there after that we have a saturator so this is just fattening it up here's without it And yeah, just really making the lead a bit fatter and not just sounding like a dry synth. After that, we just have a compressor side chaining into the cake, and then I have the CQ8 cutting off the lawn. That's it for the lead. Next sound we have here is the drone, which sounds like this. So you can see, this is just playing D, since we're in D minor. Whenever you're in a minor key, if you have a drone like this that's just holding out, I found that it's a lot better to just have it play the root note. If you're in a major key, it's better to have it play the major third. But when you're in a minor key like this, yeah, it's just playing D. For the sound on this one, this is actually a little FM pad. So what we've got going on here is, you can see I just have these four oscillators in operator doing FM, they're all just sine waves. You can see the thing here is the detuning. You can see I've got the second one detuned a little bit and I've got the third one detuned a little bit as well. You don't want to detune it too much. The reason why is because I'm trying to keep like a slow movement here. So it's kind of like, you know, slowly like warbling like that. If you start speeding these up, I mean, for one, it'll just be completely out of tune as you can see after a certain point. But when you start speeding them up, 
Yeah, it, it just doesn't have that like slow kind of thing. It just happens too quickly. And I find it doesn't sound as good in the mix. And then what I've also got on there is you can see I have this LFO. So this is just very slowly doing, or very subtly, I should say, giving a bit of vibrato. Like you can see, I've got this at 4.6%. We've got a pretty fast rate. But that's also giving it some movement, because here's without that. It's just mm, with it. Kind of like, <laughs> you know, flowing like that. So yeah, after that, we have a bit of chorus. Here's without this. And with it, you can hear I've got the chorus up quite a bit. This is giving it a really nice texture. This also helps to kind of get it away from just like FM sine waves, you know? Like chorus, yeah, just using like a really strong chorus like this is a good way to add a nice section to these kinds of sounds. After that, we have a bit of reverb here, so without that. And then with it, you can hear the reverb actually adds a bit of a cool texture as well. Like there's a certain type of thing that you get from the reverb. It sounds really good on ambient sounds like that. After that, we just have a drum bus to sort of fatten it up here, so without it. As you can hear. Definitely helps to really bring the sound out. And then we just have a compressor side chaining into the kick. And then you cutting out the line. And that is it for the journey. Next thing that we have here is the kick, which sounds like this. So this is the sound of kick that you hear in a lot of these tracks. Usually, you know, just this very punchy. I don't want to say soft, but it's not like a super hard hitting kick. Like, it's a little bit softer. It's almost like an 808 style kick. You know, the same kind of thing you'd hear in a lot of like melodic techno and melodic house tracks. So, like I said, yeah, we just got that. I've got to shorten a little bit with the fade out here. And then that is it for inside of the simple. I do have a bit of a pitch envelope on there. So, that's just adding a bit more of like an attack to it here. So, without that. And then with it, you can hear it just helps to make it a bit more quicky. After that, we have a drum bus just kind of fattening it up as you would imagine. You can hear the difference there. And then we have the CQ8, which is just doing a bit of a low boost, a bit of a higher boost, so boosting the thump and the click. And then also just cutting out some mud around 255 hertz. And I have this tuner on here as well, which I was just using to tune it earlier. It's important to tune your kicks, kids. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the next sound we have here is the bass, which sounds like this. So these are the notes, you can see it's playing this pattern. This is pretty syncopated as well, just like the lead. Like you can see there's a lot of that kind of 16th note groove happening there. But yeah, this is a pretty energetic bass, you know. It's better to have something like this than say if we just had something that was like holding out long notes. Or even something just going like doo 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 doo. Like having something like this really makes it add a lot of energy, I feel like. We take this out of the track. It feels like the outro. So, yeah, and then for the sound on this one, maybe using analog, what we got here is we have a saw wave and we have a square wave. And then I have this just going into a low pass filter with a bit of an envelope, just kind of making it a pluck. And yeah, and the key with this kind of sound is just, it's really more trying to get like a fat saw wave sound, if that makes any sense. Like if I turn this off, I mean, I'm sure that makes sense, but. Like you can hear, that's really the core of the sound. And then the saw wave is really just adding a bit more fatness to that. And it almost makes it sound like more old school. And warm. So yeah, after that we have a bit of chorus. Here's without that. And then with it, you can hear, it's not doing a ton to the bass, but it works well with something like this. Kind of fatten it up. Speaking of fattening up, we've got a drum bus on there, so here's without that. You can hear really fattening it up. And then the only other thing we got on there is the compressor side chaining into the kick. And also, I have this EQ8 here, which is just cutting at 104 hertz. So basically 100 hertz. As you may already know, the kick is usually hitting at about like 100 hertz. Like that's really where like the, like the impact of the kick is happening. So when you cut that out on the bass, it just kind of makes a little bit of room. If I play these two together, you can hear it a bit better. Here's without the EQ8. You can kind of hear the bass in that same space with the kick. But then when I turn it on, all of a sudden, there we go, it sort of cleans out that room. 
So then I have the kick and the bass in a group. Like I was saying, or like I say in a lot of my videos, when you put these things in a group together, sort of like the similar elements, the kick and the bass, or the percussion, and process them together, it makes them sound a lot more cohesive and together, and just the overall sound is a lot better. So, here is with no processing on the group here to illustrate my point here. And then with the processing. So you see what I mean. So the first thing we have here is the drum bus. This really helps. You could use anything like this, like a drum bus, a saturator, even like an overdrive or like any kind of distortion in small enough amounts, I guess. But it's just adding a bit of saturation and everything. And what happens is it glues them together a little bit, like the kick and the bass. Right now they sound kind of separate. They don't sound like they're like one tight low end. When we add this on there, it kind of fills in the spaces a little bit and makes everything a bit warmer and a bit fatter, but in doing so, it ties it together and makes it kind of feel more like one unified low end. After that, we have this EQ8. With this, uh, this is actually really similar to the one that I had on the kick. It's just boosting the low end a bit and then also cutting like the low mid range and then boosting the high end. So we've got sort of like a thump and power boost in the low end, a clickiness boost and a presence boost for the bass, for the kick and the bass, I should say. Uh, in the high end, and then the low mid-range cut just kind of cleans up some of the mud. Because with this style, you need it to be like very crisp and tight sounding, and typically like those low mid-range muddy frequencies, although they can make it sound kind of warm, it just doesn't sound crisp with those. But when I cut them out, you can hear it. It really refines the sound. After that, we have the shakers, which sound like this. So what I've done here is I've taken a shaker loop and then I've got this one on the upbeats just like a one shot and then I'm kind of like putting them together to just sound like one. This is a good technique because you know you don't have to search around for a shaker loop where they have like a like that. You can just kind of get like that main shaker to sound really organic and then you just throw this one on top of it. And then it's just kind of like one big sounding shaker. So for the shaker loop, what we've got going on is, like I said, it's a shaker loop. And then I just have it going through a few effects. The first thing I have here is just a high pass filter. Just cutting on some low end, you know, kind of cleans it up a bit. And then that's just going into a drum bus. There's without that. And with it, you can hear it fattens it up. It makes it more present in the mix. And then the last thing I have on there is this compressor. And this is a good technique if you have like a shaker loop like this and you want it to fit into your track more. Like... You know, if I turn this compressor off, you can hear, it's just constantly going. And it's not really grooving in the mix that well, it's just kind of sitting on top of everything, but if we turn it on, all of a sudden it fits in the mix really well, it kind of like makes it go with the groove a little bit more. So all I'm doing is just side chaining this to the kick. Usually you wouldn't want to side chain any of your drums, but with something like this it works really well too. Again, just fit it into the track. And then with the shaker that's on the upbeats, like I said, it's just a shaker sample. Pretty simple stuff there. Next sound we have here is the rim shot, which sounds like this. So this is pretty simple. It's just kind of like this little fat rim shot. This is the kind of thing you'd hear in a lot of Ame and Dixon tracks, and a lot of like melodic house and techno in general. Yeah, with this one, it's more just about like finding kind of like the right sample. If you want this one, you can get it in the description or on my Patreon. But yeah, like I said, like just finding a nice like kind of punchy rim shot like this. That's going to really cut through the mix. You can hear we also have a few like extra little notes in there. Like I have these little 16th notes here and this 8th note there. You know, it just kind of adds a little bit more to it. Makes it feel a little bit more organic and live because it's not just only playing on the same count throughout the entire track. I have all that percussion in the group. Like I said, with the kick and the bass, really helps to tie the similar elements together. Here is without anything. And then with the drum bus. And then with the EQ8, so you can hear, just like with the kick and the bass, or with the lawn I should say, the drum bus really ties everything together, it just makes everything feel so, like, similar, you know, and so cohesive. A lot of times, a lot of people ask me this, like, how do you get samples that sound like they fit together? And the truth is, you have to kind of fit them together. Like, obviously, you know, you want to get similar sounds. These are all, like, very organic, live-sounding percussions. But, 
like you can't really get them closer in any better way than when you put them into the same processing. You know, when you put them into the same processing, not only does that tie them together and kind of make everything more even, volume-wise and all that kind of stuff, but it's also just putting the same sonic texture on everything and giving it all that same saturation. So then everything sounds a lot closer just by virtue of that. And yeah, and then after that, we just have this EQ8, which you can see is just cutting off the line. Here is, I'll show you, like, there's a bit of line, like, in the rim shot and stuff, so just cutting that out so it doesn't get in the way of the bass. And that is it for the percussion, and that is also going to be it for this video, guys. So, I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video, as well as subscribe, and let me know what you think of this video in the comments. As always, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that kind of stuff from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there. It's already available, and it has been for like 24 hours now. But yeah, thank you so much, everyone, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.